Today on Locked on Rockies. Well, the All-Star game is over. The second half of the season is on the way. What can we expect for the Colorado Rockies? You are Locked on Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the 17th day of July in the year 2024. I'm your host of the Locked on Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. And if your team is the Colorado Rockies, guess what? You're in the right spot because that's what we do around here each and every day, free and streaming on your favorite streaming services and available to you on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show. You can fire off your Rockies hot takes. You can let me know what's on your mind when it comes to the Colorado Rockies. And it's the best way to help the show grow when you subscribe to the channel, when you leave reviews when you leave those comments when you let me know what's on your mind we love chatting with you folks again uh we are your daily colorado rockies talk we are bringing you all sorts of good rockies coverage we're gonna look at the second half of the season today we're also gonna talk a little all-star game of course and uh who has to improve or who has to impress in the second half all that and more on today's episode of locked on rockies but before we do that gotta let you know that today's episode is brought to you by prize picks the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports go to prizepickscom slash locked on mlb and use code locked on mlb all lowercase for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars all right, folks. This uh, let's just start with the uh, the initial things and the initial news. It uh, was cool to see Ryan McMahon make it into the All Star game. Unfortunately, it was a typical Ryan McMahon at bat in which he struck out. But I shouldn't say that. That's mean. But unfortunately, the, the at bat went the way that it has gone with Ryan McMahon. Sometimes he also played second base, which was weird. But it doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, a guy that has long deserved to be in the All Star game has made it. And I think now, depending on when we're talking second halves of the season, right? When we're talking about people to watch, and when we're talking about uh, who needs to impress. I don't know if Ryan McMahon necessarily has to continue to do that. But if if we can see the much you know this mature advanced uh pro you know i don't know captain-esque i know the rockies don't really do captains but like captain-esque ryan mcmahon i think we'll see strides and i think that we'll see him you know improve i don't really like i said i don't what what is it to improve strikeouts sure consistency i mean i think that's obviously the biggest thing we're looking for when it comes to ryan mcmahon right is we want consistency we want to we want a second half of consistent offense and uh you know it's 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 just interesting as it seems like he is very much you know maturing into a leader on this team and maturing into an all-star i mean these are now you know getting the all-star you know being at least having you know there's going to be a solid conversation for gold glove at the end of the year i mean you know getting these personal accolades i think are going to be feel personally good but then i think ryan it's kind of in that mindset of now He's the veteran guy. And according to him, it seems like the Rockies uh, aren't going to be making uh, any moves uh, with him uh, anytime soon. And um, because uh, he was uh, was saying that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this was uh, I can't I'm, I'm, I'm getting this from the New York Post, but I, I don't know who else it was saying this because um, I haven't found, a, you know, interest, you know, a, a bunch more. But uh but uh, McMahon is assured that however much sense a trade might make, a trade will not happen at the deadline. Over the past week or two, McMahon said he grabbed Colorado general manager Bill Schmidt before batting practice one day and asked for a chat. We had a good talk, talked about it, and we came to the conclusion that I'm going to stay a Rocky, McMahon said Monday from Globe Life Field, where he was set to come off the bench. McMahon, uh, uh, McMahon is a four-month-old daughter and a wife who would have to pack up the whole house and everything like that, he said. He wanted some peace of mind, and he got it, as the Rockies will hope to build around him rather than build through the prospects he could command. Um, so there you go. I'm trying to figure out if that is uh, from, from somewhere else as well, if this was uh, also in the McMahon piece by Patrick Saunders. Um because Patrick Saunders just uh, write, wrote an article all about uh, finding balance for Ryan McMahon, and and I and I think that that's 
it's a really interesting mindset you know it's 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 really interesting that uh, the the philosophies and stuff that people have to take when it comes to baseball like it's got to be really really hard to go through the grind of baseball it's got to be really really hard to go through the grind of baseball when you have a newborn daughter and yes they're playing baseball yes they're paid a lot of money but but look, i'm just take away those things i'm talking about at its core for a person so yes while the competitor athlete championship driven side of every baseball player always wants to be placed in the best situation to win absolutely and contribute to that winning i think one thing that it, it, it shouldn't be a selling point but but if if the rockies offering an athlete like ryan mcmahon the stability he needs in his life is it can be a good thing. The Rockies get over eager and they're over over willing to 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 reach that stability and 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 overpay to bring people in to kind of uh, sweeten that deal a little bit. But it's an interesting case where Ryan McMahon's contract's not crazy. Ryan McMahon's uh, you know the commitment to Ryan McMahon isn't that wild. But to know that to know and feel confident that 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 you're going to you know be sticking around and be a part of this and and knowing that the Rockies probably mean it too. I mean, that's, that, that is a thing for players. I think the Rockies probably do appreciate how loyal the Rockies are. Like if, if they say they aren't going to trade you, like there's a pretty darn good chance you aren't being traded. I mean, if the Rockies, they, they, they might make moves, but, but, and, and we'll see what development's going to be made. But, but I think from the player side, I think there is a comfort to, the, the the loyalty of the Rockies can bring certainly a lot of comfort to your life. And I think that can help if, if, if you're not thinking about this. All Ryan McMahon now has to think about in terms of, of baseball is being the best ball player and do what he's going to do. Uh, Ryan McMahon is uh, three years into a six year, $70 million contract uh, because of or, uh, according to the Denver Post. But um Anyway, so it's it it is something that I think I, I I'm sure that 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 kind of helps a little bit, and I think helps take a little bit of the edge off and allows McMahon to focus on baseball uh, mostly and 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 just playing ball. But but he kind of uh, it, it touches on this in Saunders's piece here in the Denver Post. Although McMahon didn't become a full time starter in 2019, he was part of the Rockies 2017 and 18 playoff teams. The memory of that success drives him, even as the Rockies careen toward their sixth consecutive losing season and are likely heading toward their second straight 100 loss season. It's not fun. It's not what you want to be doing, said McMahon, who's three years into a six year, $70 million contract. I got spoiled because I got a taste of the playoffs my first two years in the big leagues. It was awesome. It's definitely something I want to experience again, hopefully a couple of more times and hopefully in Colorado. I mean, it's uh, it's it's and and Black goes on to comment about his uh, his um, leadership abilities and and things like that. But it's interesting that I'm not seeing too much about this uh, conversation with uh, with with uh, with the GM and everything with Bill Schmidt and everything. I, I it's it, I'm, I'm I'm intrigued um, that when when you click news and when and when you and when you uh, when you go through the tabs, there's only the New York Post is the one mentioning that uh, that uh, conversation. So I figured that would have been picked up and talked about at least by uh, by by somebody else. But uh, let's see, because this this is this is posted by. Uh, OK, so this is added to. So so uh, on uh, on CBS Sports dot com, they uh, they follow that up with uh, with that. Uh, Rockies third baseman Ryan McMahon was the number 12 candidate, according to CBS Sports, has been told by GM Bill Schmidt that he will remain with the team through the trade deadline. We had a good talk, talked about it, and we came to the conclusion that I'm going to stay a Rocky. OK, so that that was in a conversation with the New York Post. That's who that's who uh, asked the question and talked about talked with him. Uh, but it does appear that uh, at least CBS Sports is uh, is backing that up. Um, so there. uh it, 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 it opens up an interesting question. So I guess I'm I'm curious to you, the Rockies fans. It, it does take McMahon into his 30s when he when he's done three more seasons with Ryan McMahon, 70 million dollars. Do you think that the best course forward for the Rockies is to trade Ryan McMahon? 
just build up, give you know, and and fully embrace and do the rebuild thing. I think a lot of people will say yes, absolutely. That 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 is that should be for sure, without a doubt, what the Rockies do. I'm I'm just wondering if the Rockies are they because think Ryan McMahon, a couple more years of con control, plays elite defense, isn't going to be there too too long. Maybe they think that they like that deal in the long term, holding on to it versus say what they're going to have to figure out with Brendan Rodgers, what they're going to have. You know, you know, now that Montero has been DFA, like now you can start maybe looking. I Maybe the Rockies think that they can get when they go to the deadline, they can they can move other pieces to bring those those prospects in and bring things in. While keeping someone that's become a cornerstone, someone that has become a face of the franchise type guy at third base for only three more years and on a contract that's only seventy million dollars, it's 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 yes, the Rockies should trade Ryan McMahon. It's not the end of the world as long as they don't may as long as they make some moves and do some things. I don't think Ryan McMahon's contract and 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 length of contract and money committed is is really something that that you're going to be you're, you're you're punished because of your you, you, of what you could bring back, especially because he's an all star this season. He has that. It's it's the same thing now, you know, like with Elias Diaz last year, and now with Elias Diaz with the injuries and, and stuff. So so it, it, most likely. The player to bring the biggest haul back for the Rockies is Ryan McMahon. Absolutely. He's an all-star. He's got the resume, yada, 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 yada. But again, maybe, and this is a stretch. I know it's the Rockies. The Rockies are looking at other trades, other options to to, to make those moves to, re, to, to bring those prospects in while keeping someone they're, they're really confident and they really like in third base. So again, doesn't sound like he's going to be moved. We'll, we'll, the trade deadline has to come and go for us to fully see that. But uh, so let me know what you think about uh, about the move and, and, and that news about Ryan McMahon. Uh, let's look ahead to the second half of the season and uh, start just uh, talking kind of more big picture Rocky stuff, what we're looking for and what we're hoping for for the Rockies and uh, how they're starting things off. All coming up here on Locked on Rockies. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Supply House. Get supplies from the site that's made for the skilled trades, supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need help with an order? Get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person every time pros in the skilled trades can even get a competitive edge by joining supplyhouse.com's free trade master program every trade master gets access to a dedicated phone line free shipping and discounts on every order join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at supplyhouse.com slash tm and order plumbing hvac and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com we are also brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million daily members. And unlike the other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Brenton Doyle hits, Ezekiel Tovar hits, uh, Cal Quantrill strikeouts, um, and Charlie Blackman stolen, ba stolen bases. All you do is put those four players in your lineup for the day and you select more or less. Don't worry. It's not like someone else is going to sneak in and take that sleeper pick that you were thinking on that, that you really knew was going to have a big day today and was going to get you that win. It's not what that's not how it works. That's not what you want to do. It's just you against the numbers. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into a thousand dollars if you're looking for promotions prize picks has got you covered every week from lowering select players stat projections on tuesdays to help your lineup hit 
or getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Fridays. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code Locked On MLB on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast. We are free and streaming on your favorite streaming services, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. The second half of the season starts on Friday against San Francisco, the dreaded San Francisco Giants. Rockies will then play the Boston Red Sox before a California road trip of another trip between San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego. So as we explore the conversation of what does the second half look like for the Colorado Rockies, kind of when you look at it in the beginning and then a little bit toward and then towards the end here of the second half of the season, how does the Rockies or how do the Rockies play against the NL West in the second half? If you're looking for a a uh, a nice benchmark for the Rockies to be able to pass this season, if they're able to avoid the 100 losses, if they're able to avoid the worst season, if they're going to hit that 60 and a half over, yada, 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 it's going to come down to a lot of these series against the NL West. And it's going to come down to especially the series against the, uh, the Dodgers and the Giants, especially. When you're looking at the starting the season, the Rockies are the starting of the second half of the season out of the Rockies first one, two, three, four, that's 10 games. The first Rockies, 10 games, seven of them are against the Giants that, you know, and so, and then you flash forward to the end of the season, the final 10 games of the season, uh, nine games of the season, mind you, I'm sorry. The final nine games of the season, six out of those nine are against Los Angeles. And then if you back that up to the last 12 games of the season, uh, it's nine of the final 12 games are against the NL West with a series against the Arizona Diamondbacks at the end. So that's going to be, so while the Rockies aren't going to play the, uh, you, know, you know, the division throughout the whole second half of the season, it is going to set the tone for both the beginning and the end. You're starting the season against a, a Giants team that certainly is licking their chops to play the Rockies this many times to start the uh, second half of the season to boost them, to get them moving in the right direction after the All-Star break. And then, of course, you're going to have a Los Angeles Dodgers team looking to be doing everything, tuning up and getting ready to go for a playoff run at the end. And same with uh, Arizona, who might be in a situation where the when the Rockies play them in that final series of the uh, uh, their final series of the season, not the final series of the season, when they play together, where Arizona is looking at every win matters at that point. And that is in Arizona, that series. It's not in Colorado where the Rockies can hide behind the uh, we play better at home type of thing. The question also will remain with those as well is, is how well do the Rockies play against teams above 500 and teams that are good? You know, San Francisco is kind of still right in the middle right now and has the Rockies number, but how do the Rockies handle Boston at Coors Field? And then on the road trip, how will the Rockies face a fair handle a poor Los Angeles Angels team here at the end of July? You know, as we saw in the first half of the season, this team it had a really weird habit of playing good ball against teams, especially at home. And then when it's, when they play bad teams on the road, they look like, uh, you know, they, they forget how to close things out. Well, that's been the case all season long, too. So when you look at the schedule and when you look at things, you look at some of these stretches and, and you kind of pull your collar a little bit and you give a little bit of a sheesh where it's just like, do you are the Rockies going to avoid 100 losses? I mean, it, it certainly is going to be difficult to do. But there is a little bit of some reprieve here-ish. In the second half of the season, you do have Miami playing, coming in and playing four games at Coors Field. You do play Detroit. Who knows what the Chicago Cubs might look like at this at this point in the season when they come to Coors Field. Uh, but, the I mean, you, and you have that series against... Uh, the uh, angels, but when you really break it down and when you really look at it for the rest of the, uh, the, the rest of the second half of the season, it's basically playoff teams throughout every series. Uh, you play three series in a row uh, without, because I'm still counting San Francisco in the mix. They're just like everyone else in the NL. That's that that's in there. Then you have that three game stretch against the, uh, the angels. Then you have, 
at San Diego, and then the Mets and the Braves come into town for six straight games against against top level talent before you have to go to Arizona again. And then you go to San Diego, and then you got a road a pretty tough road trip in which you're going to go to Washington, and Washington is somewhat still in the mix as well. We'll we'll, we'll see how the season continues to carry out for them, and then you go to the Yankees. There's no real when you look at things here in the second half of the season, there, there, there's no real reprieve or, or stretch where you're looking at and you're saying that should be a rock, a, a, a moment. The Rockies dominate. So how do the Rockies respond to the challenge? We, we, we saw what happened in the first half of the season when the Rockies had a tough schedule there. We we've talked about the schedule a lot this season. But now it's a, you know it's it's it, they're they're in a groove they're they're going some guys are heating up some guys are moving on and 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 what will the team look like after the trade deadline as well? So that's kind of the schedule breakdown. Let's let's focus a little bit maybe on on areas or players that the that the Rockies really need to be, to get improvement performances from. And I think it's no surprise that it all starts with the bullpen. We'll talk about that that coming up in segment number three of today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Before we do that, we got to talk about the folks that help make this show possible. And that includes eBay motors ebay motors i gotta get you know you gotta have your you, you can't talk ebay motors without our fancy graphic so passion drive and patience the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive ebay motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and more whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Folks, welcome back into Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. Hey, for your second listen of the day, did you think about listening to Locked on MLB? What about Locked on Sports Today, your 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and Amazon Fire TV, giving you all your breakdowns of all your sports across the leagues. And if you need your Rockies play-by-play -play when they pick back up on the go, check out SiriusXM and the SiriusXM app. They got you covered right there. Shout-outs again to all y'all making us uh, your first listen of the day. So we're looking at the second half. We're looking at the teams, looking at the schedule, looking at uh, talking about where the Rockies might succeed. But I think at the end of the day, it the, the Rockies' offense is going to go through the ups and downs, and they're going to I, – I really hope that we see a team that strikes out less in the second half and walk more. That is that is my biggest goal for this the, – the, or biggest hope for this Rockies' offense. Yes, I want to see the continued power output. I want to continue this team to continue hitting home runs at the rate that they were hitting it going into the break and, and doing it on the road. That is awesome. But I, I really do think fundamentally at the core, I, I just want the Rockies to become a better plate vision and better plate discipline team uh, in the second half of the season and start setting up the routines and, and, and start setting up the success for the future. I don't necessarily know how you can really, really make sure you be like, how about, you know, just building up the, the, the foundation and the process in your mind mixed with, I, I you know, of course, I want to see the team hit home runs and continue to be aggressive on the base pass, continue to be stealing bases and continuing to use speed when they have it. But uh, really the thing that's going to set the tone, because at this point, I'm not going to be overly worried about the rotation of the Rockies, the starters. More often than not, the Rockies starters have been able to put the Rockies in positions to win this year. And, and, and they might not be the prettiest starts. They might not always be quality starts. They might be a little ugly and a little this or that. I understand that. But that's not but if the I am asking the Rocky starters to continue to do what they have done most of the time this year, which is keep the Rockies in the game. And then reality, it's the bullpen and Bud Black's bullpen management. Here's an idea. Let's not keep throwing Victor Vodnik for multiple innings in a row. And we've seen the fact that he thrives in a one inning thing. And then when you give him four to, to have him get three more outs or something like that, it gets a little shaky. 
mixed in with the fact that he's a rookie that's been used more than just about any pitcher in, in any bullpen in baseball. It, it this is it, all of this has to change. I mean, the Rockies are really bad when it comes to the bullpen, man. I mean, they are worst in ERA. They have they are bottom six, bottom six when it actually comes to saves. Their bullpen has given up the most hits in baseball. The Rockies bullpen has given up the most earned runs in baseball, and they have given up the most earned runs in earned runs in baseball by I believe 36, if my math is correct. They have the highest whip in baseball by almost by uh let's see uh 14 points. They have given up surprisingly enough, the the well, nope. I thought they'd be higher on this list, but uh, they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Still in the top 10 when it comes to home runs allowed. They are second in walks allowed, and they are third to last in strikeouts. So, again, it's it's that's got to change. And, 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 and if they weren't that bad, and if the bullpen wasn't as bad as it's been this year, mixed in with the offense being as putrid as it has been this year, you'd be looking at a different story. You'd be feeling a little bit different than the Rockies. But but I I think I have more I have more confidence in the Rockies offense to be able to go on some solid stretches than than I do with the members of this of this bullpen and just the management of said bullpen. I I, I really think that again. As we're looking for stuff in the second half, I want to know, I want to see reasons for Bud Black to get an extension. What is, what is he going to do with this team? That's in a tough spot again, facing back, you know, what is he going to do to, I know the culture of the Rockies good. I know they're close knit. I know that they got good vibes, uh, even amidst the struggles. I, and, and you know what? That is good. I'd rather the Rockies actually, you know, like being around each other and trying to fight through the struggles together as a unit than, you know, a divisive picking at each other uh, type of type of clubhouse. But it, it, there's just there just needs to be a lot of show me something. And I think a lot of and, and, and the, that show me something also has to come from from the from Bud Black and the coaching staff. Show me that you can have this team make adjustments in the second half against good talent and win ball games. Show me that you know how to add to, to 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 read your pitchers and bring them in and out at the right times because I consistently feel like Bud Black overleaves their overleaves people in, doesn't read the situation, over relies on people. And show me that you can develop a closer. I mean, where what I mean, what a it's pretty shocking that 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 the conversation is not only that the Rockies don't have a closer, but they haven't been able to to develop or get any someone really able to lock down slam the door no issues no worries come out the bullpen with a fancy song and light shows and all that stuff and slam the door shut the Rockies don't have that so can the Rockies develop that show me something from the development side show me something from the philosophy and coaching side that makes the Rockies unique let me hear from 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 people in the interviews saying We've been working on this in the clubhouse. We've been doing this different thing. We've been doing blah, 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 blah. So I can build confidence there. Because right now I can safely say that a, a Bud Black extension announced in the middle of a, of, of a season where the Rockies are going back towards 100 losses signals that this team is ready to do more of the same. It signals that this team isn't ready to fully take on the, the, the brunt of what it means to be going through the worst seasons in franchise history and build this team back up. Because again, these are important developmental years for key young players and key players that are trying to be trying to break out into the league. So if they're not being put in the best situations possible, if they're not getting the best resources possible, if they're not taking the steps forward that they need to, the Rockies will continue to be this bottom dweller for time to come. But we'll see how it goes. It's a tough task for the Rockies to start the season. And, 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 and the, first, the best way to set the tone is to go out there and do some damage against your, uh, the Giants. You're, you're, you're opening the season at Coors Field against the Giants in Boston. So you're not traveling. You have Coors Field. 
set the tone and set the tone for a strong second half and set the tone for a strong trade deadline too for some of these players that if they want to go be you know a, a shot to go compete at a title this year on a team that's that that's that's going playoffs you know show out and we'll see how the second half shakes out for the Rockies. Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen of the day, go check out Locked on MLB. And if you need more Colorado sports coverage, check out Locked on Broncos, Locked on Avalanche, Locked on Nuggets, and Locked on Buffs, all available free and streaming on your favorite streaming services. Hey, check out the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel. When you leave those reviews, when you subscribe, when you like the videos, all that stuff is such a huge help. Really do appreciate it, folks. And until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked on Rockies podcast.